ask a gamer for a list of their top 10 games, and it'll probably be made up of titles such as Ocarina of Time, Halo, Super Mario, Shadow of the Colossus, and Pinball Construction Set. But one title you'll never see on anybody's list would be Art Alive. Well, unless they suffer some sort of head injury. Then again, it's not technically a game either, is it, Larry? Quiet, you. Art Alive was Sega's response to Nintendo's Mario Paint. But while Mario Paint was a cult classic, Art Alive was an uncontrollable mess. The main reason being, Sega decided to scrap the mouse idea that made Mario Paint so great, and decided budding artists were just as capable of creating classics with a joypad. Which is the equivalent of drawing with an extra sketch using your bum. Just have a butchers at some of our masterpieces. Here's a self-portrait of yours truly. Here's one of Paul Vale riding a unicycle. And here's some old rubbish Wes managed to muster up. And I only developed carpal tunnel syndrome once while drawing them. The box art didn't exactly help much either. Those children look far too happy for my liking. Possibly on some sort of hallucinogenic drugs considering those well-drawn fish are swimming out the television there. And they certainly wouldn't be smiling had they actually played the game. Don't feel like drawing? Then you can animate some of Sega's top stars like Sonic the Hedgehog, Toe Jam and Earl, a duck, and random walking person. This was Sega's first and only foray into the art package world. It hasn't really stood the test of time, mainly as it wasn't considered the best of titles back then. Why oh why Sega never released a mouse for this game is just madness. While it wouldn't have been on par with Mario Paint, it would have at least made it a bit more accessible. The only thing you can't draw of this game is some fun. This has been a Portland Interactive production for XLeague.tv. You're not very good at this, are you? Yeah. <laughs>